Get there? Yeah. You're the new neighbor. Yeah, it's Terrell. Yeah. Must be Eric, right? Yeah. Yeah. Met your girlfriend this morning, Lisa. Nice gal. Very pretty. Very pretty. It's her house, right? Lisa's? Right. right. Thought you two were married the way you were squabbling this morning. Yeah. Guess you're writing something, or? Yeah, listen, I'm gonna uh, head back inside. It's good to meet you, Harold. Right. <clears throat> It's a nice car. It's a Lisa's, right? Yeah. Carl Sagan was one of the first to draw parallels between the modern alien abduction narrative and ancient folk tales. Hmm? We've always had these stories. Legends of being taken away by fairies or monsters. They've always been with us. There's a need, a built-in human need for these stories. It's just where our brains seem to naturally go. Taken against our will to some place special. Hey, what are you doing up? Well, not sleeping with all the noise you're making. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I, um, I locked myself out. These headaches just keep... Anyway, I met uh, our new neighbor, Harold. <laughs> oh, he's a real charmer, huh? Guess you talked to him this morning? Did you tell him about... No, Eric. Listen... We need to talk. This isn't working. Baby. I know it's hard. I know. And I really appreciate it. Med school, Eric. That's what I signed up for, not this whatever. Cultural anthropology. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm sorry that you don't find it as interesting as I do. Come on, you always knew that med school was just one option. I, I know, but seriously, flying saucers? It's not, it's not flying saucers. It's, it's, it's a lot more than that. It's, it's about, you know, the ideas be, behind the phenomena. Why we feel the need to, to make up these myths in the first place. Well. Okay, well, um, I think that we, uh, we create these stories out of a desire, a, a need to not feel so alone. Yeah, but we are alone. Sure, but... There's nothing wrong with being alone. That's not the point. Yeah, no, it's exactly the point. What are you saying? I'm saying... I think that's what I need, to be alone right now. And to be honest, I think it would do you some good too. No. No, it, it wouldn't. Yeah, well, in case you haven't noticed, that's a two-person... Lisa? I'm sorry I woke you up. 
All right. I'm I'm gonna go for a run. <laughs> Fine, you do that. Run. not a metaphor. Running. Yeah, I got it. What, did Cindy say something? Is that what this is about? What? No. Oh, come on. I know that she doesn't approve of me, or I mean, even like me, for that matter. And it can't be easy. The fact that she got married before you. Please, it's not Cindy, all right? Can we talk about this tomorrow? Sure, I'll just skip work. I mean, it's not like I'm ever gonna get back to sleep now. Okay. Okay. I'm here. Maybe we just rushed into things too quickly. You moving in. Whatever it is, it's just... It's not working. I'm not happy. I know we agreed. I, I said I'd support you, and I have. But maybe that's what's taking you so long. I mean, what's your incentive to finish? And this, what you're working on, it kind of feels like... Like you're trying to prove something to yourself. Uh, like it's all just fairy tales. It's an obsession. You're making yourself sick with it. These migraines and well, Many abductees prefer to be called experiencers. For most, details of the experience won't emerge until much later, typically under hypnosis. Motivation for having themselves hypnotized is what's called the aftermath. Nightmares, headaches, depression, missing time, gaps in conscious memory, minutes, hours, sometimes even days. And that's when the experiencers will reach out, try to find out what happened to them. experience is finally remembered, it tends to sync up pretty well with those of other abductees. The creatures, greys, mostly, at least here in the US, paralysis or inability to resist, the cold table, the probes, interest in reproductive anatomy.
Lisa? Lisa, you up? Hey, Harold? Is that you? Hey, Eric. Yeah, it's me. How you doing? Uh, it's good. Good. Uh, how you doing? Can't complain. Cannot complain. Hey, listen, did you, um... Did you hear anything last night? Like, like after we spoke? Hear anything? Like, like what? Noises? What kind of noises? You mean, was something wrong or? No, you know, it's, never mind, never mind. Uh, thanks. You sure? Because I, my niece, she's, uh, she's staying over for a bit, you know? I could ask her. I mean, she don't sleep at all. Yeah, I think I saw her last night. What's that? You say something? No, nothing. Thanks. Thanks, Harold. Okay, sure. Hello, Professor Connell. This is Dr. Connell. Uh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Connell. Th um, it's me, Eric. Eric Rayner? How nice to hear from you, Eric. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing great. Um, I actually am calling because I think I'm ready to come back and finish up. Finally. Finish up? Yeah, my doctorate. Uh-huh. Uh, Eric, where are you calling from? This number. You're in the valley somewhere now? Yeah, um, well, I'm, I'm staying with my girlfriend. For now. Oh, a girlfriend. Yeah. No, it's just I, I promised I'd check in now and then. Um, but you moved. <laughs> right. Well, um, so listen, the... the the reason I'm calling now is because I was hoping that maybe I could uh, actually get in this semester. I know it's kind of late. Oh, yes, of course. How soon do you think you could come in? Oh, well. When, when is good for you? You think you could make it in this afternoon? Today? Wow. Uh, honestly, um, things are kind of up in the air right now. Why don't I give you a call later on this week and we can set something up? Well, I don't know that it's such a good idea to wait, Eric. Um... Okay, uh, listen, I'll, I'll call you when I have things a little more together. Thanks, Professor. Eric, I... Hello, Eric? Hey, Lisa, it's Kathy. Where were you this morning? The presentation went okay, I guess, but... Can you give me a call and let me know if you plan on coming in today? We were... Lisa, hey, it's me. Um, your boss called? I guess you didn't go to work today? Uh, anyway, uh, I'm home, so just call when you get a chance.
Nearly one million people are reported missing each year in the United States. That's more than 2,000 people every day. The majority eventually turn up, alive or otherwise. Statistics on alien abductions are understandably less precise. Even if every single experiencer was willing to come forward and be counted, that would still only represent the number of people who returned from the experience to describe it. Death. Come on. Let's get on out of here. Go on. Shoot. Whew. Good lord. Did she come over here to take a dump? God, I hope not. No, there's, um... Modern mythology, huh? Like what? Bigfoot? Yeah, something like that. So, what is it? A book? My thesis. Doctoral thesis, actually. So, do you, uh. What, well, you know that woman? Lola? Ah. So, what do I call you? Doctor? Not yet. Eric. Beth, thrilled to make your acquaintance. So what's next? More study? Oh, let me guess, postdoctoral research. Mind if I join you? Oh, yeah, I, um, gotta keep working. Okay, whatever. Thanks for the help with Lola. It's Eric. Eric Rayner, uh, Lisa's... Yeah, hey, how's it going? Um, good, is, is Lisa there by any chance? No, 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 she just, I, I, um, I guess she passed on work today, so I was... Yeah, no, it's, it's nice out, so probably shopping, right? <laughs> okay, well, can you just do me a favor and if you hear from her, Give me a call. Thanks. What are you doing here? Oh, yes, about the noises. Uh, uh, what? From last night. Uh, this morning with my uncle. Harold from next door. Oh. Wait, you're Harold's niece? I know. What are the chances? So, can I come in? What for? So we can talk. About last night. Yeah. 
Yeah, come on. Harold says you guys argue a lot. You and your girlfriend. What's her name? Lisa. What, how would your uncle know that? I mean, the guy just moved in. Is it true? Why don't you and your uncle just mind your own business, okay? So, what'd you see last night? I mean, that's why you're here, right? Well, um... Something woke me up, which is weird, because I hardly ever... Don't sleep, yeah. I got that from your uncle. Thanks. Is that it? Oh, do you play? Beth, is there something that you want? God, what is your problem? I, I don't have a problem. You came in here and said that you had something to tell me. What is it? O okay, God. There was, like, this hum sound at first. came this throbbing sound, kind of like out of tune or something. Did you, did you see anything? Like what? Lights? What about you, Eric? What did you hear last night? What did you see? Wait, you, you totally knew that that was me when we met. Did you follow me? <laughs> Why would I follow you? So where is she, Lisa? She's at work. What are you doing here in, in town? Just visiting. Really? Just hanging out with your uncle? So everyone else needs to mind their own business, huh? Research, I'm doing a documentary. On what? UFOs, all right. There's been a bunch of sightings recently up by the tower. The tower? Yeah, for the past few weeks. Well, didn't you see? It was on the news. No, I've, I've been really busy. How long have you been in town? I got in late last night. Okay. Um, well, thanks for, um, thanks for that, I guess. Wait, Eric, listen. There's a meeting tonight. Witnesses of UFOs and stuff. Right. Yeah, no, I, I know all about those guys. I'm going. Come with me. No. Come on, it's like a... A modern mythology. I know it is. You never told me about last night. What you saw, what you heard. I had a bad dream. Right, one you thought your neighbor might have noticed. I had to be sure it was just a dream. Well, now you know. I just thought it was some kind of helicopter or something. All right, black helicopters? Is that what you think? No, that's not what I think. Well, what do you think? Look, Uncle Harold's the one wearing the tinfoil hat in the family. Seriously, that's why I'm staying with them mostly. Wait, I thought you were staying with him because of some documentary. But that's right. Wait, look, I know you have a girlfriend, all right? and I'm not hitting on you. I swear. <sighs> Come on. I hate going to these things by myself. Uh, those people weird me out. It'll be interesting. Promise. Please. The first case of alien abduction to really capture the public's imagination occurred in 1961. Barney and Betty Hill driving home late one night, noticed a particularly bright star in the sky and started watching it. After a while, it became clear that it wasn't a star at all. In fact, it was following them. They pulled over 
and it descended, then hovered above their car. Years after the experience, under hypnotic regression, Barney and Betty each remembered details from that night. Betty remembered a long needle being inserted into her navel. Barney remembered somehow giving a semen sample. Five years after remembering, Barney died. Brain aneurysm. He was 46 years old. This one I took just last week using a high quality digital camera right from my backyard. Now using digital enhancement technology, I was able to refine the image, bringing out some of the details. Fuck's sake. Why doesn't he just take a picture of his cornflakes? <clears throat> Anyway, I believe this to be a reptoid reconnaissance drone using an advanced form of stealth technology. I can't go into any details right now, but suffice to say, I have my sources. I'm sure Dr. Mack will have more to say on this later on. Until then, I'll just leave you with this. My friends, behold hybrid reptoid infiltrator in our midst. Brought to you by your local evening news. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone that this is a judgment-free zone where anyone can feel safe talking about what they've seen or perhaps what's happened to them without fear of being judged. Yes, in the back. Thank you. Uh, do you mind just going over your qualifications? I hold a PhD in theoretical nuclear physics from UCLA. Mm -hmm. And what about the group leader? My degree is in psychology. A applied behavioral analysis. Degree? I'm currently working on my master's. Will that suffice? Guess it'll have to. Anyway, I, I know most of you are here to see Dr. Mack, so without further ado, Tonight, I'd just like to begin by talking to you about reptoid aliens. Now, as many of you know, it is my thesis, my contention that the universe is literally teeming with life. That life, indeed, is the common denominator of the cosmic backdrop. That we truly reside in the inhabited universe. Indeed, I contend that every planet in the universe harbors an entire spectrum of bioforms ranging from lower to higher embodiments, none of which is necessarily humanoid, English-speaking, or intelligent, <laughs> but most certainly alive. Now, the reptoid phenomena, as it's come to be called, has been haunting us here in the States since the early 1860s. In Europe, since the early 1830s, possibly the late 20s. Pretty trippy, huh? Oh, God, these people. Yeah, they're totally into this stuff. Well, you, you know, you read about stuff like this, and. I just think it's some oh, fringe. Shit. It's, it's Harold. Don't let him see me. God, I'll never hear the end of it. Hey, neighbor. Thought I heard you. Yeah. Harold. Yeah, well. Yeah. Look, it, uh, I totally understand you wanted to keep your interest in this thing under wraps. I mean, you never know, right? Right. I'd be spies. Right, exactly. So, uh, what do you think? Especially about the, the, the reptoids. Well, I can't help but think they might want to keep their plans under wraps a little bit more. These, uh, these shapeshifters, you know, maybe, maybe not 
show up on the news? Well, see, that's the hybrid infiltrators, see. But what they do is they can take over folks sometimes. Yeah. The weak people, they put implants in them, they control their mind. You saw, I mean, they got all sorts of ways. Right, right, the, the implants. And um, all of this is to do what exactly? I mean, what's, what's the, uh, the plan? Let's just say that they're up to something. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to take the stairs. Oh, I'm sure I'll see you around. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah. See you around. It's, it's all about reptilians now? Or no, I'm sorry. Reptoids. Seriously, is that what they think a shapeshifter would look like? <laughs> yeah. I thought there'd be more about the little guys with the eyes. Grays. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be like the scientists. There's other ones too. Oh, I know. Trust me. I know all about it. <laughs> right. For your thing. All right, Beth, what, what's your interest in all of this, honestly? The same as you, Eric. What does that mean? It means I'm dealing with the same thing. My boyfriend was taken. Aliens. No, fuck you. Well, no. Well, no, if you no, honestly stop, believe it. No, stop. Stop pretending. Oh. Okay? We don't have time. I, I'm sorry. You no, know, you know, I keep trying to be like, trying to play it cool with you, you know, and I just can't. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, calm down. I have no idea. What? Okay, what? We don't have time for what? You're not going to listen. No, I'm, 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 I'm going to listen. Your boyfriend's missing. Tell me about him. What? Okay. So how long has he been gone? Three months. Almost. All right. And no one's heard from him. And what is it that makes you think that it's an abduction? Because it happened before. When he was little. He described it to me. But he could remember. He knew it was gonna happen again. How? I mean, how would you know something like that? Because he started getting these bad headaches. These migraines. And a scar in his stomach. And a scar in his stomach. It started bothering him. Like right here. What was the scar from? He couldn't remember. It was from when he was really little. Anyway, I stayed with my folks one weekend, and when I got back, he was just gone. So what'd you do? I asked around. Of course, nobody knew anything. And then I called the cops. And they were just like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Don't run away all the time. I mean, it's true, it does. It's no. He wouldn't just leave like that. Listen, I heard about this guy here in town who knows a lot about this stuff. And that's why I came here. Honestly. He was supposed to be there tonight. Anyway, he's this... 
MIT professor, totally legit. Former MIT professor, Guy. Well, do you know him? What's his name? That's it, Guy. Guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I, I interviewed him for my thesis. He's, he's, a, he's a real piece of work. Do you still know how to get in touch with him? From childhood? Yeah, uh, on the stomach or on the side? Well, as it happens, I actually do know quite a bit about that very subject. Sure. Implants, tracking devices. No. The kind of thing you're talking about, the, the childhood scars, the discomfort. Yeah. You see, I have a colleague who is a surgeon, so... What did you find? Well, nothing out of the ordinary, let's say. Go on. It's just a theory. Tell us. Please. Yeah. Well, all right. Now, as you know, most experiencers describe their abductors as primarily humanoid in form. Two arms, two legs, corresponding facial features, that sort of thing. Well, when we compare humans and monkeys, there are comparable similarities. Now, that's not a surprise because, of course, some breeds, genetically speaking, are almost 99% human. Oh, so, given the proper advances and breakthroughs in the manipulating of genetic materials, what would you think would make sense for us to generate resources for medical purposes? Course. Resources? Yeah, okay. I think I know where you're going with this. Wait, what kind of resources? Think about it, Eric. So these are reptilians, shapeshifters, from Alpha Draconis? Hmm. Not necessarily, no. Ask him about the tower. Right. Uh, what do you know about the tower? The tower. Yeah. The old abandoned place on the north side of town. There's been a bunch of sightings up there recently. I guess it was on the news. I don't know anything about that. What, what, what have you heard? Never mind. Let's go. What about getting them back? Why won't he tell us? Because there's nothing to tell. Thank you, guy. Have a good night. You're welcome. Um... What do you expect to see? I don't know. But it means something. I know it does. Is someone following us? No, Beth. Nobody's following us. Just humor me, all right, please? Is it? I don't know. It's a 
some kind of lock. All right. Seen enough? Eric, what did he mean? Guy. All that medical stuff. Come on, Beth, don't. He's, he's some nut job with a little bit of science under his belt, that's all. Look, I know you think it's ridiculous, okay? I got it. I just want to know what he meant. Okay, well, um, you know how with trees they can take a weaker branch and graft it onto a sturdier trunk? Right. Yeah, well, he's basically suggesting that, that they are doing that with us. Splicing things? I, I, I don't understand. Okay, do you remember his whole preamble about monkeys and humans? Right, well, he's saying that if there are enough chromosomal similarities, then one species can host another species' organic material, like organs. Which, I mean, on the face of it, it's not... Wait, host? And, and then what? Like, later they're just gonna... Come back and harvest them, yeah. Harvest? Beth, I... It's so full of holes. I mean, anybody that's studied genetics at all will tell you it's... Beth, that guy's insane. Don't give him that much credit, okay? the grip, remember? Eric, you don't even drive. Whatever this is, it's not, um... Okay, that, that's where she was. Right there, in our bedroom. Where she sleeps every night. Where I sleep every night, right? Except last night. We had, we had a fight, so I was out here. Beth, I knew that something was gonna happen. I've, I've been getting these migraines lately, and... and I've had the scar. I, I don't even know. I don't even remember where I, it came from. I mean, are you, are you hearing me? 
They came for me. No. No, no, don't say that. I, uh, okay. Well, how else do you explain all this crazy shit happening all of a sudden? Hold on, what? what's wrong? What do you mean, what's wrong? Well, I don't... Why, why are you so... Eric, if they came for you, they're not gonna stop. Seriously. Why do you care so much? Bad dream, that's all. Oh, I, I didn't want to wake you. You look so peaceful. Look, I need to go, but I'll be right next door, okay? Call me if you want to talk. I put my number in your cell. It's under Beth, okay? Hello, Eric. Uh... <laughs> Dr. Connell, what do you... I'm sorry, how did you even find me? I'm sorry, I left a message after you called. I, I looked up your number, and it turns out you're right on my way into work, so... I thought I'd stop in and see how you're doing. Hope I'm not coming at a bad time. No, it's... it's fine, it's just... Wow, you people don't screw around with admissions, do you? <laughs> well, you did mention coming back, so... Yeah, I, I want to finish up my doctorate. Eventually. Your doctorate? Well, I think that's a very good idea, Eric. Picking up where we left off. Um, I want you to know I support your decision fully. Um, well... Professor Connell, I, I appreciate that you're taking an active interest, but I feel like there's a line, and frankly, you're... Eric, is everything all right? 
When I make my decision, you'll be the first to know. Thanks for stopping by. Why are you suddenly so interested in what I'm doing? Well, just as you said, taking an active interest. As I try to do with all my students. How you doing? Fine. What are you looking at? Uh, nothing. Nothing. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Are you sure? Everything's... Yeah, I said I'm fine. You want to just mind your own business? <laughs> Harold, I'm sorry. Why not? You're not sure? Sorry, yes, I'm sure. It's a spleen. It's human. Okay, so what could it mean? It means I'm done fucking around. Who are you calling? The cops. Who else? Okay. Fine. There was blood on the windowsill. Well, if that thing is where you said it was... I then... found a broken fingernail. That means she was struggling. She, she wasn't asleep. She was wide awake and she was struggling. That doesn't fit the, the, the usual pattern. Maybe that's because the usual pattern is bullshit. This, this is real. Oh, fuck oh me. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Okay, you can fly. It's okay. No, this is, uh, this is so out of hand. What are you doing? I'm calling the cops. They suspected me, Eric. They still do. What are you talking about? The police. When my boyfriend disappeared. And I had an alibi. It doesn't matter to them. And Harold, Harold knows about us, doesn't he? About last night? He wouldn't talk to me. Great. Oh, that's that's fucking great. I could explain, you know. Yeah, no, you're you're my ace character witness. He uh he was really worried about his girlfriend, officer. I mean he did fuck me in her bed, but he was worried about her. Ugh, Ugh what is this? That thing was inside him? It's it's heavy. What's that ring made of? Silver. The ring is silver. Okay, this is gonna sound... Just listen, all right. What have we seen recently that looks just like this? Are you talking about the door at the tower? Exactly. Inside a spleen. I don't know. So we... We take it seriously, make the connection. Jeez. Uh, aren't spleens, what's the word? Uh, like we've evolved passing in a body part, but it's still there. Vestigial? Right. No, they're not. Okay, but unnecessary. 
Well, that's debatable. I mean... But you get my point. No, I don't. What's the best way to hide something? Beth, why are we playing 20 Out in the open, Eric, right? So what's the best way to hide something inside a person, even if they get x-rays or surgery? Swap out something that won't be missed. Okay, fine, but why would whoever's doing that leave me a spare part with a fucking key inside of it? I don't know. Maybe someone's trying to help us. Maybe one of them. Or someone else. Beth, how well do you know your uncle? Pretty well, I guess. Why? <laughs> no. No, no, no. Harold may be totally into this stuff, but... Yeah, well, why? I mean, why is he so into this? Harold's not the one we need to see. In the 1970s, the FBI investigated a series of livestock mutilations. The wounds on the animals were described as surgical. Organs and tissue were removed. But no trace of blood or tracks could be found anywhere near the bodies. A number of UFO sightings coinciding with the events led many to believe the culprits were alien visitors, doing research, experiments. No suspects were ever arrested in connection with the case. I did not say you could come in I know, here. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but we need to talk some more. What, what, what happened? What, 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 what's going on? Okay. Show him. place we can stay. Let me just run and grab a couple things and you do the same. Sister. Oh, she's uh she's not with you? No, Eric. She's not with me. I left her a few messages but never heard back. 
That's not like her. No. <clears throat> uh, well, you know, Lisa and I broke up uh, the night before she called in sick. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. She broke up with you, right? No, we, we both agreed. So, uh, what's up, Cynthia? What are you doing here? I told you. I was worried. And I have a key. So, I mean, you don't mind, do you? No, of course not. I'm just, just a little surprised, that's all. Yeah, sorry, I, w I was making dinner and then I, um, I had to run out for some errands. Yeah, well, her work said she emailed them she was taking the day off. Then later it might be a week. That doesn't sound like Elizabeth. And what on earth is that thing? What are you doing, Eric? Hello, it's me. Are you packing? What? What's happening here? Please, just what are I? Okay, um, Beth, you just give me a minute here. Oh my god! safe, but then, then what? Eric, we have to do something. They won't stop. And, and this is connected somehow. I know it is. Okay, but I don't, I don't, what are we gonna actually do? Look, all I know is they're still after you. And whoever else they need. We can't just hide, we have to try doing something. Okay, I know, but Beth, you're not saying anything. What, what's, what's the plan? I mean, do we even have one? Just break into the tower with a fucking piece of metal? This isn't just a piece of metal, Eric. Wait a minute, whoa, wait a minute. What if... All right, what if we're being um, manipulated or controlled? Controlled how? I, I don't know, what if whatever they put inside of me is... I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. It's what, what everyone says. Mind control. But I'm Eric, actually... Eric, just think. This is real. Lisa is missing. And so is my boyfriend. And just now, oh, Lisa's sister. I know, I know. And, and I know. what about Guy? He freaked out when we asked him about the tower, remember? And when we showed him this, the key? My college professor came by the house today. What, what, did, what did he want? She, I don't, I don't know. She just showed up all interested in what I'm doing. Eric, who else knows about all of this? Nobody. No, nobody. By the way, we don't know what the fuck is going on. You're right. I don't know what to do, Eric. I'm so scared. I don't want to be alone in all this. You're not. I don't. You're not. It's okay. We're all 
storytellers. Every one of us. It's another part of our nature to explain things, find meaning. We look at a cloud and see a face. Show us a series of random images and a pattern will emerge. A story. Give us a tangle of dots and we'll find the straight lines connecting them. It's hardwired. Instinctive. And like all instincts, it originated as a means for survival. The ability to identify relationships, detect patterns. It operates independent of conscious thought, free from the constraints of logic or reason. Life of its own. Back in the truck. What? No, we're both. I don't want you to get hurt. No, Eric, I'm not just gonna let you walk in there I'm and. I'm not asking. I'll be fine. Let me do this. Please. Here, you you take the gun and, and I'll use this. Seriously. It's fine. I'll, okay. I'll take the pipe. I'm gonna be fine. I swear to God, if you don't come right back out. Wait five minutes. If I'm not back, then go nuts. Start shooting. Be careful, Eric. Followed you over here, okay? You followed me? I was just I'm worried about you. I overheard. What's in there? Where is she? Who? Oh. Beth? I need to know what's in here. Beth, are you all right? No, what is in here? Harold, what did you do to her? Who? Look, what's, what's going on in here? What did you do to her? Beth! Who's Beth? Oh! 
Help me! Somebody help me! Human to kill anyone who might suspect. Make him look like a psycho or a serial killer. That way nobody asks any questions about the bodies. Wait, wait, wait. Listen to me. What did they make you imagine to control you? Huh? No, wait, no, no. That's right. That's right. You think? What was it? What did they make you believe? so worried. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't see you. I'm so glad you're okay. What did they make you imagine to control you? Come on. Let's go.
Eric. We should go see our old college professor. Connell. You mentioned her. Said my professor. I never said her name. just in the portion of the universe we can observe today. So making the case that we're not alone makes sense, statistically speaking. Which is just as well. No one wants to be alone. I'm sorry.